All right, hopefully I'm in frame. I never make videos standing up, but I gotta bring a little bit of energy today. Oh, I did it like that, but okay. So uh, a lot of you are new here. A lot of you might not even be watching this video, but if you've been here for a while, or if you just want to know or want to be informed, there's there's a couple of you know realities about me. One of those realities is that I I love movies and I love talking about movies. I love watching movies and. I, I do everything in my power to see as many movies that come out in a year as I can. And two, I think my only talent in life is ranting. And sometimes that's positive. Sometimes it's it's passionate, positive, I'm excited about it ranting, and other times it's just traditional ranting. And every once in a while, if you're really lucky, those two forces come together. And uh, that's what we're dealing with right now while talking about the haunting of Sharon Tate. Now, if that name, Sharon Tate, sounds familiar to you, that is because she's one of the people who was murdered by Charles Manson's cult. She was also Roman Polanski's uh, wife. Uh, I don't like Roman Polanski, no surprise there, but it's just kind of letting you know who she is. You know, she was an actress, and you know, she was one of the people who was murdered in that home in the summer of 1969, which as I'm sure you have potentially realized if you're really fast at math or just know this, it's where we're at the 50 year anniversary right now. Now her name would have come up recently on my channel because just last week I made a video talking about Quentin Tarantino. He had just been, you know, touring his movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood at Cannes Festival and, you know, somebody was kind of complaining that the, you know, Margot Robbie's Sharon Tate didn't have a lot of speaking lines. I openly said, well, the movie's not supposed to be specifically about Sharon Tate. It is Rick's story, who was played by Leonardo DiCaprio. She's just, there's just that backdrop of what's happening happening in, uh, in that area of Hollywood at the time. Now we're gonna circle into my issues with this. So I originally wasn't gonna talk about this movie until the Tarantino movie came out. It was originally supposed to come out in August uh, due to the wishes of the family. He bumped it up to July so that it wouldn't coincide so much with the 50 year anniversary. And I would like to openly state that uh, Sharon's sister, Deborah, openly said that she was, you know, she was very hesitant about the Tarantino story and about the movie, but, you know, he invited her on set he let her read the script, he let her know exactly what his intention was with the film, and now she she signed off on it, she gave the movie her blessing. So in my opinion, uh, well, obviously I haven't seen it, uh, I guess that means it's probably good to go and it's not really exploitative in nature. Obviously this is one of Tarantino's um, flipped history stories, much like Inglorious Bastards is where it takes something from history but then just kind of flips some of the details. But this movie, just to give you guys the rundown and the reason why I'm talking about it now, uh, is because of the behavior of the studio that produced it and probably largely the, the director who wrote it himself, who was on quite the little tear up of making these weird altered reality horror movies based on actual murders. And that is because the plot of The Haunting of Sharon Tate is about Sharon Tate getting all of these weird scary nightmares that are being displayed as premonitions where she sees herself and the other people in the house dying, and then she is trying to do everything in her power to stop it from happening, but nobody believes her, even though there are weird people coming by the house, and there's people leaving things at the house that would just kind of let you know that, hey, something weird probably is happening, maybe we should just call the cops out here and just give them the check in on some things, and then you end up with this, this weird option where they get the chance to try to like change, change their fate. There's a big, big uh, element of fate here, but, it is very much firmly in some kind of like weird supernatural moment allowing these people to try to like change the outcome of what happened. And in my opinion, that, that is both exploitative and it's really insulting. It's really bad. Now, the worst thing about it is the director thinks that this is some way of like honoring her memory and showing that it's a way for her to fight out of it. And his entire letter to the family doesn't even read as something like, I hope I get your blessing. It really, it's all about him. It's like, I remember how much it affected me as a child. I remember how much it's like stayed with me my entire life, but I've been affected by this my entire life and this is my outlet. And I might even be a little bit more sympathetic to that reasoning. Future Amanda here. I just want to point out that it's absolutely laughable that he's trying to say that this isn't a typical slasher movie considering this thing is just loaded with just horrible, brutal violence, fake movie, 
blood and it's just gratuitous in its entirety. Uh, that it got stuck with him if he hadn't made something about like the Amityville horror last year and if he hadn't already finished filming the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson for next year. This dude's making some weird triad of real murder cases and not even in a way that is just telling you the straight up facts of the situation, what actually happened, like, like I suppose Zodiac did, like David Fincher's Zodiac, which is based off of a book written by a cartoonist, Robert Graysmith, who worked for the San Francisco Chronicle. So, you know, that's that at least was just trying to tell the story honestly and just kind of capture that place uh, of America and what it was like living around that time. You can say what you will otherwise, but this is just exploitation, it's pointless, and the, the movie itself is really bad. But again, I was gonna wait until closer to the release of the Tarantino movie to watch that movie and kind of bring this up on the side. Now, but the reason why I'm talking about it now is because we got, we got a little bit of justice going on here in that for whatever reason, Lionsgate and Lasso are claiming basically a bunch of videos. And in some cases, they're not just claiming monetization, they're blocking the video in all countries. And the one thing that all of these reviews have in common is that they all shit on the movie. I actually don't know if there's any positive reviews out there. It could literally just be that these people are the ones randomly being targeted, but literally every review is just negative. So it's just working out that way. But somehow I don't think so, considering the lengths that they're going. You know, some of them they're blocking in all countries. Some of them are being blocked on multiple devices. Some of them are just being completely copyright claimed. And it's, it's not like valid copyright claims. It's people using just like video portions of the trailers chopped up in sections of the video as if I was just gonna put something over the screen right now to, to show you what was up. Also, just to throw it in there, they cast Hilary Duff as Sharon Tate. You can't just put Lizzie McGuire in something and expect me to be okay with it. Anyways, we'll get that out of the way. So this was specifically brought onto my radar because my friend Art, who I went to Sundance with, uh, featured a little bit of this movie in his completely unrelated video where he was talking about Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile, which we actually watched together at Sundance Film Festival and walked away with similar opinions of the fact that at that point, the trailer had dropped that day, Everybody was all like, can't believe they're making a movie just uh, glorifying Ted Bundy. And we're all like, yo, you haven't even seen it yet. And then he just mentions, if you want to know about an exploitative movie, have a, can I introduce you to The Haunting of Sharon Tate, which I think is also on Netflix, at least in the States, and Extremely Wicked obviously is because they picked it up at Sundance. But so he ended up making the comparison video of those two and they claimed his video. And that's how this got on my radar and that's why I got angry and I started looking into it and they, uh, they claimed this girl possessed by horrors video, uh, some other guy named Desmond's video. And I'm sure there's a bunch of other people whose videos have been claimed to some degree uh, because they are, they're just angry about it. If you look at it, it's manual detection. It means that they are going around looking things up to manually detect it. Art's video doesn't mention the movie in the title or the thumbnail in the slightest. I didn't know that that was gonna be featured in his video until I watched the video. For him, it was the same as Possessed by Horror, blocked in 248 countries, unavailable on some devices, and monetization claimed by claimant. And then the two claimants were Lionsgate and Lasso Entertainment. Now, he actually countered it. Possessed by Horror said, I'm not gonna bother count countering it because then it's just gonna go to that same group of people. Then they just have the, the ability to shut it down. It's not worth it. I think you should always go through that first round and just like point out fair use laws. And a lot of times they'll drop it. I got them to drop, so I got Sony to drop some monetization claims on my second channel about a Spider-Man video. And you know, it, it all worked out in the end, but I can understand in this where it seems like they're actually targeting bad reviews. I understand it. So I checked in with him today and he said that Lasso ended up dropping their claim on it, but the Lion's Gate one kept all the other things. So that includes the blocked in 248 countries. So this is a movie that is so bad that they are going around finding people's reviews so that they can manually take them down if they feel like it uses like just even the remotest section of their video. So that's why I'm not gonna include any actual trailer footage in this. I'll probably put some people's faces up and stuff, but this is a bad movie, not just because it's exploitative, it's really gross when you think about it. And like, I'm gonna get in some of the details and I'll let you know if you really, like I recommend not watching it, but I'm gonna get in some spoilers and I'll point it out. But also just because it's horribly made. The script is terrible. Like everybody's trying to like go at Hilary Duff specifically. I'm not saying that she's some kind of like, you know, Academy Award winning actress. Like I do love Lizzie McGuire, but a lot, of, like how can she act well when she has a script like that? These people, they're a threat to my safety and to the safety of my baby. But yeah, now we're gonna get into a couple of the specifics of the story and why the, just the movie in general is just really horrible. But I just recommend not watching it. So just like, keep 
keep rocking with me here. So this movie starts, like I said, she starts getting nightmares and premonitions that like horrible things are gonna happen to her and all her friends. And to the point, she actually gets a direct, like shot by shot imagining of how her and her friends are going to die. And this is like loosely tied to the fact that I think like a year or two before the murder, she said she had some kind of dream about her and uh, one of the friends there dying. And it was like, it was just a dream and it was a couple years before. And that is how he kind of just extrapolated this out to an entire thing where she is basically being, is having premonitions of her untimely demise. And it's very bad. Um, and then, you know, they'll, they'll do this weird thing where they take actual historical footage of Sharon Tate talking to interviewers and, and stuff about the murders, like actual news footage of the murders, and then like blend it with like her, like Hillary Duff's Sharon Tate, just in black and white talking to like an interviewer or something so that it's like, it's just trying to blend this like fiction and reality without living in the world of reality. And it never establishes that with the viewers. So it's, it's just very insulting by that nature. It is really just some weird, like, hey guys, what if we add a supernatural twist to the Manson murders? And just throwing in the actual footage makes it just seem pretty gross. Just very gross. They managed to fight off the Manson family, like, you know, minimal injuries. And, uh, you know, they're, they walk outside the gate and they're all smiling and then they're, they're waiting for her. And then, you know, she turns around and it starts doing the voiceover stuff. And then her character is specifically kind of saying like, you know, I think that we're kind of all, there's just an, a never ending amount of like worlds and universes that we're in. And we, we basically just kind of keep going through it until we get it right. So like a multiverse theory type thing. And that this is just the scenario where they managed to get it right. Except as this is happening, it has her walking back through uh, where the house is and walking like and all of their dead bodies are in a row and it just you know you see all of them with the white sheets pulled down but in hers it's white sheet pulled over her face and then she goes and she just pulls the sheet back and there's her dead too and then but all the rest of them are waiting on the other side of the gate smiling it's like as if they're they're ghosts and then they took the second chance and or they're in, like, it's just weird. And like this, this other thing happened throughout the entire movie. It's like they decided they wanted to add slow-mo shots into the movie, but they didn't plan for it ahead of time. So they shot presumably in 24 FPS as is the cinematic standard, just the entire movie. And then the scenes they wanted to slow down, they just tried to slow down from that frame rate. So it's choppy. I'm not even a filmmaker and I know that you don't do that. I have no formal training to make movies and I know that you don't do that. How did this, unless it was some kind of weird style choice, which I sincerely doubt. Director Daniel Ferens, he's done a lot of like documentaries on horror movies by the looks of things. I've never seen any of them, but so it's almost just like he got bored doing just like the straight up like documentary, here's what happened. So then he just decided to grab real life tragedies and just put a horror spin on them. Like most of these situations don't need a supernatural twist or some kind of like explanation or weird added thing. They are horribly gruesome and terrifying and tragic all on their own. That's why people still talk about them. So this movie is absolutely horrible. I 100% recommend not seeing it. And Lionsgate, please stop claiming people for complaining about this damn movie. There was a Twitter account that I thought was getting really sassy with people and that it was genuine, but they've added to their bio fan account, so they're just, it's a fan account getting sassy, but this is a disgustingly exploitative movie where the living family members have specifically said they're not okay with it, but the director is defending it to the death that it's okay. The sister specifically used the term extremely hurtful and hateful to describe the movie. And this dude's still gonna try to defend it because of how he feels and how he feels it affected his life. The gist of it is, is that this movie is horse shit. It should never have been made. And the specific fact that they seem to be hunting down uh, YouTubers and reviewers in any way they can to try to censor their voices and silence their voices. Because a lot of them have openly said, claiming monetization is one thing, it sucks, and it's still, it's definitely a fair use violation, but at least the video is out there. They're blocking it on multiple devices. They're blocking it in like hundreds, almost like 300 countries. That's a big deal. They need to stop and uh, just accept that it's, that it was not a good movie and it was an incredibly poor taste. So thank you all so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and we'll catch you all later.